Hello there and welcome. Very exciting time to be part of the community because the winter balance patch is indeed out. So without further ado, let's start looking at some of these notes, shall we? And um, I'm actually, you're in good hands with me. I've played about 30, 40 games on the balance uh, mod. And I also ran three tournaments on the Balance Mod. That was a Patreon tournament for all the guys funding the Master League. It was a Streamer Cup. And, of course, Master League Tournament 4, um, a 32-man group elimination tournament, was all on the Balance Mod changes leading up to this. So I've got really good experience. So hopefully I can talk you through, give you a little bit of insight how, to, how it affects competitive. A lot of what I say will definitely be appropriate for one versus one. It may also lend itself to team games. So first of all, as you can see, main gun criticals now affect everything under 20% um, health rather than 25%. This will mean that your medium tanks, mostly your Panzer IVs and T-34s, they'll get a lot less main gun criticals, quite frankly. And um, it doesn't go far enough for me. I'm not happy with it, but there's going to be a lot in this patch I am happy with. So I don't want to talk about something that everybody knows my thoughts already on. This is interesting. This is going to make um, Pumas just not as um, annoying to play against. It, it's basically a nerf to Pumas being the carry-all for OKW. And just seeing them smashing around the map, just getting that cheeky critical shot off. And, um, you know, it's going to make them a lot less rampant. Mobile AT gun squads uh, now have an innate penalty of 10% received accuracy. Uh, so they're going to be more vulnerable to small arms fire, basically. So you can flank them, decrew them. That reminds me a lot more of Co. One. Um, I saw a little bit more of that recently, and it just reminded me back when AT guns were a lot more vulnerable. In Co. Two, you can reverse your AT guns away from any small arms fire if it's rifle based, especially. It's only really obers and and maybe like shocks that you really fear. The other like the rifle, the bolt action guys, you don't really fear them. So this will help in that case. Um, Infantry-based AT rifles, ready aim is decreased, PTRS can now attack ground. This is going to be really cool for um, competitive tournaments, of course, seeing those volleys through the hedgerows. Um, and yeah, you guys are just going to have to attack ground a little bit more with the PTRS to get that last final shot off, or it maybe even predict um, the path and stuff. Ready aim fire is going to really help, so you'll be able to spin on the die, and um, your entire squad of penals can spin faster, get that second shot. Well, not spin faster, but get the ready aim, get the guns up faster. Um, that's a massive decrease in time there. Mobile, this is my first time reading this all, by the way. Just an FYI in case I get anything wrong, please correct me in the, the comments. Um, so let's have a look at infantry mortar smoke. Uh, I am smoke barrage wind down so it'll, you can fire faster and more smoke. I really do think that, um, yeah, it looks like this is the 81mm for USF and British and the Soviet 82mm. Yes, all the mortars, basically. This is fantastic. Great change. We needed mortars to be seen more in the game and giving their smoke more utility. This is uh, a bit of a surprise to me. I uh, wasn't expecting to see this in the notes, but I'm really happy with that. It just looks like it's going to help the game tremendously. Uh, this is the heavy machine gun team change next. Manual reload's a big thing, but the formation changes... I can't describe just how much that's going to change how MGs work. You're no longer going to have that front gunner dying, and then the other guy comes up to pick the gun up, he dies. It's called a death loop animation. You might have it by random occurrence, but, but, but in, in principle, infantry tends to target the closest thing to them. You, you know, they, they shoot at who's closest. I don't know if you notice the guy that always goes forward dies in Company Heroes. But now this means that the heavy gun... The heavy machine gunner himself uh, won't die first. And then, of course, manual reload. Uh, I think that's going to take several months before players are doing it. But the top players will probably start practicing it immediately. And I, as a caster, and other casters are going to have to pick up on that. Because that is cool. Ostvins are a good one that you'll want to do that on. Um... MGs in houses just when it when you know when it goes quiet just go through your army and and reload everything it's going to be one of those things that, that raises the skill ceiling without affecting everybody else you know how like snipers are annoying snipers are annoying because they they require babysitting and they kind of make your entire play about them well for top level players they have to operate like they would operate normally with a sniper in uh, involved as well, you know. So it raises the skill ceiling. And we're actually going to go on to um, snipers. I'm sure that healing, uh, 
yep, yep, yep. Healing changes. So they're always making healing better and more reliable. So, you know, it's just good. But sniper changes. Now, this brings me neatly on to snipers. I've got a controversial opinion about them. I think that they're buffing snipers. Now, you may think that a decrease of this much of sight is a, a big nerf, but the best players in the world, be it 2v2, 1v1, whatever mode actually, the best sniper players always use their snipers with other units close by. Only, only in kind of noobish play will you see uh, a sniper just goes forward, attack moving, looking around, trying to find his first shot like some Call of Duty kid. No, no, no. Most good players play in combined arms. So, Sight really doesn't matter. The sniper is, does ne doesn't really self-spot um, in, in Company Heroes top level. So the fact that they're reducing cost um, is a buff. Sight doesn't matter for me um, in, in top level competitive. And will no longer auto-target vehicles, of course. That's a, a slight buff. It's just an ease of use, quality of life change. Veteran C, yeah, and they, then they reintroduced the sight thing anyway. So they're buffing snipers in this patch. And, um, yeah, they, they didn't listen to my feedback on that. I'm a bit confused as to why they would think that this is an, uh, a nerf. Sorry, yeah, a nerf. It is not a nerf. This is a buff, which is alarming for me. Um, I did see a lot of players snipers. I play with them myself in, in, in balance mode, and I can confirm that it, it's a, for me it is, it is a, it's a pretty, pretty decent manpower uh, buff for me. And in general, it comes out on top as being a buff. So that's controversial. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I wish... So sometimes, yeah, I mean, you can't I just expect people to listen to each individual person, but that, I, I did release a YouTube video with that, but then I can't expect everybody to watch uh, or agree. But I, 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 I think my opinion on that is nailed on. Um, you know, never mind, never mind. Let's move on. Um... M3 and half tracks now here. Yeah, yeah, bring in those old uh, 251 changes. Awesome. M3s and M5s doing it too. Come on down. I love it. Really good change. Um, all Panzer uh, Panthers and Command Panthers. Accuracy. Increased base accuracy. Consistency. Okay, so it's a, it's a buff to Panthers. Um, a, a minimal buff to Panthers. Just making sure they're a little bit more consistent. Let's move on. Pintle mounts being standardized amongst all the M4 Sh Sherman variants. Okay, that's just standardization. Fair enough. Playing clashes. This is borrowed again from Tawny Mode. Um, great work, uh, work Wolf and I have done with the Master League, of course. Um, it's, it's just making playing clashes no longer nuke everything, which is fair enough. And, I, you know, I, I like the fact that the, the, the kind of non-relic affiliated sides of the community, like... Um, you know, the Master League project and, and, and other stuff uh, like it, they kind of compete with the Relic Ordained Balance team to kind of say, uh, oh, we're doing this. And then it kind of creates like a, huh, interesting. You know, and I'm not trying to say, oh, they nicked our idea. No, the more good ideas, the better. The more people thinking about this kind of stuff and putting out these out ideas out there. And, for, you know, in this case for Tournament, we just said, we're just going to do it. We're just going to remove the four worst RNG events from competitive. And it's now had like a a back reverted effect where the balance mod guys are like, oh, yeah, we have the confidence to do that as well now. So I'm really happy that that has had that effect. And I'm not just trying to, you know, fluff my own ego. I'm just happy. You can't blame me for being happy. Um, <laughs> which you can begrudge me. Trenches are having their target side increase. Yeah, let's just remove trenches. This is slightly towards making them worse, so good. Let's let's get rid of them. Just delete them with AT guns if you can. Fantastic. Infantry-based flamethrowers. Number of bursts needed to set buildings alight. This is a cool change. I've seen this in operation. It does work. And um, raise buildings to the ground. Yeah, pretty scorched earthy. Let's go. So, ow. This sandbag change does not go far enough if it's still the one. Yes, it looks likely to be the one. So... It's just a 50% increase in build time, but you barely see it, to be honest. The change this needed to be, if they were if they were abundant in testicular fortitude, if they were feeling brave, would be remove sandbags from frontline squads. The only one I could consider keeping sandbags for me is definitely not riflemen and infantry sections, because 
You just have to play the green cover as Brits. You shouldn't be building your own green cover, in my opinion. Riflemen, it just... Oh, it's just... I don't know why those commanders have... No, they're, they're, at least they're on commanders. Those commanders aren't even the best commanders, to be fair. Except for... Uh, oh, no, my God. Heavy Cav has it. Jesus Christ. Um, conscripts... Just... just Right. Hear me out. Frontline infantry does not have sandbags because you want to encourage synergy. You want to encourage combined arms. So the worker units should have sandbags. The only time I can consider it's makes sense is with folks grenadiers and hear me out because the stone pioneers have too much to do already they they have to heal plant mines diffuse mines kill etc repair etc they've got too much to do so but the rest yeah 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 whatever you, you know what i'm saying now uh, that's a good change as well so it's a it's a double nerf to sandbag usage you can bald wire it off more easily uh, this is a fantastic change you know about this one right this means eight year at Vehicles and eight um, anti-tank gun squads come out with prioritized already on. Uh, another step in the right direction. Wonderful. All AA units now the prioritized aircraft uh, ability. Fantastic. Again, raising the skill ceiling. Loving these little changes, making the game just a more polished experience all round. Fantastic work. <laughs> call in infantry and highest resource games. All zero CP zero call in infantry can immediately be deployed at the start of the game in high. Re well, that doesn't affect me. Fair enough. The following change has been made to ensure engineering units do not accidentally... Yep, love it. This is fantastic. It works. I have to remind myself when I'm playing live these days of the danger of Bob Y because playing balance mod is so effortless and fun. And that you have to say that is another nerf, another nerf to my sandbag complaint. So although the sandbags aren't going away on frontline infantry like I wish they would, at least they're having three nerfs. This is a nerf because you can now just walk up to a sandbag barbed wire it off. However, we are going to be seeing a lot more fl uh, flagrant use of barbed wire, meaning you're going to have those sandbag wedges growing along, along points. They're going to get more layers and they're going to get wider because people can just walk up to it, barbed wire it without worrying. Um, yep, yep, more uh, reload. Great, great, great. The following formation changes. Uh, that This is fantastic, by the way. This is really good. So this is uh, making it so that the you know, the Grenadiers previously had like a flying V formation, meaning the guy at the apex dies. And now they're in a more of a box. Four guys running along, like, you know, like a the the number four on, on dice or die in a board game. They, they look like that, and it really does help. Um, Panzer Shreks go in the V formation. Okay, so that makes them fire the Panzer Shrek earlier, I guess. So you can I don't know, whatever. Um... Yep, stop misclicks. See the level the helping has played the game. They're really helping. Hole fire's all good as well. Um, hole fire here is um, issue revealing themselves. Yeah, yeah, the second there, but just more. MMGs will target infantry and hole fire is active. Fantastic. So you can now just keep your gut, your brum bear back when the pintle mount won't, doesn't, you know, buzz off and, and reveal its position just before the attack ground expert volley goes off. So it's just helping. It's just helping. I read that wrong, didn't I? The only exceptions to this are the Brumbat and the Dozer. Yeah, so actually, it's the, it, it, the the thing I'm saying is right. You see, I did really well to not mess up. This is the first mess up I've had. This is I'm quite happy with. So um, yeah, it's it's the they're the exception to the rule. Um, okay, fair enough. And we're nearly done, actually. So I did really well to nearly get to the end. And we've got another pattern change coming in. Oh, no. This is... Is this... Um, let's, anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I don't think we're nearly done. I think we've got all the faction-specific stuff coming up, I think, maybe. <laughs> Very good. But anyway, all light vehicle and uh, light tank wrecks. All light vehicles are now crushable by all the light vehicles. That'll, that's a big change. That's really going to help uh, maneuverability in the game. I'm really feeling like this patch is a monster. It's just an absolute wonderful monster that's going to help us so much. Uh, we'll now always penetrate mines and detonate them. That's really helpful. I don't know if you ever had the the awful feeling of trying to blow up a mine with a grenade and then it doesn't work and then you, you're wondering, is the mine there? Is it not there? Now you'll definitely know it's there. Um, I've made my thoughts on this clear in the past. I don't believe in USF pop population cap exploitation. I think it was originally a bug in Relic window dressed it as a feature. So the fact that the community balance team are now having to make it so you can only go up to 110 is like a dressing for the wound, in my opinion. And it's just going to help that 
a little bit. It means that you won't get like massive USF armies in 4v4s deliberately exploiting this and roving around with seven Shermans and a full army still. Uh, so it kind of it kind of helps. It basically means they've got a little bit of room for margin for error um, of that 10 extra pop cap, but that's it. You know, and I actually like that. I'm not sure how the officer transfer orders are going to affect things. Um, I, I think it's just to play around with this. Uh, they just realised that they couldn't have those guys on the field, and um, so it's kind of it balances this out a little bit. Bar drop rates going down. They did drop too often, and uh, you often saw you know a lot of access units with them. So fair enough. A little bit of a buff to USF there. Tiny, tiny stuff. Field crews are having their reinforcement price reduced to better reflect their weak stats. Fair enough. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll actually consider um, retreating them now and not letting them die, I guess. The following change will make... Yeah, it now receives 20%. Uh, minus 20% damage when in the headquarters sector, basically meaning it can survive one tank round from a medium, for example. Um, and I, I'm not completely sold on this, um, I must admit. I think it's map design that's faulty sometimes and player ambulance positioning. I also really like the danger element of the player worrying about the rumble of tank noises in the fog of war. Pulling their ambulance back, I see that as a really high note of skill. And now it's not as dangerous. It's almost like if they get hit once, who cares? You know, it's not going to really matter. Um, rear echelon reinforcement. That's pretty cool. Yep. You might see a little bit more blobbing now, though, with rear echelons. They aren't actually that bad blobbed, especially in team games with bazookas, etc. So uh, it's not going to be as punishing. If you imagine every single model on that rear echelon is going to be two less, and it's only two of 25, it's quite a big uh, change, that is, to be fair. Veterancy requirements are going up, however. So you won't be able to get to five men as easily. So that mitigates that. I like it. Um... AT grenades now be available to US players have met specific tech requirements to get with ultra lights. This make will make it harder to rush USF infantry with ultra lights that have yet to gain veterancy, along with making fresh riflemen in the late game viable as snare squads. Ah, this that's it. I see what they're saying. And um Okay. So you base yeah this plays the same way as it did. I was the reason I'm really reading this. I know the change, but I wanted to make sure they hadn't changed it. There was a lot of feedback on this. Um, so you just get any tech and you get eighteen aids, um, and yeah they've just they've messed with the veterancy. Okay, what I don't like about this is I don't like I would have preferred in Company Heroes two they kept with the design mantra that everything has a vet one ability and. In this case, they're removing an ability. I know there are other units that don't have abilities, so, but I, I, yeah, I wish they weren't doing that. And secondly, I actually think that it's um, dangerous for make it harder to rush USF. Yeah, it is much harder to rush USF with ultralight vehicles now. So this is a nerf to Vermax in particular, the two 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 spam against USF, for example, the two five one. You're not going to know whether the rifleman has snares or not. So this is a big buff to USF. You can't just rush in there looking for that one star above the um, the rifleman to signify the fact that they've got veteran C1. You, you just don't know. You just don't know. Um, okay, there. That'll, this will make it more, more, slightly more, more. Um, people will build it now. There's a smoke thrower. It's going to be a smoke machine that you build. Ten cheaper manpower. Lieutenants. Smoke now shares a cooldown with frag grenades. Fair enough, that makes sense. I like it. Build time from six to five for the M7 mine. Fair enough. Fifty cal. I'm, I, I use fifty cal's a lot, so for me, they're my crutch as USF. So I really want to figure this out now. So it's a nerf to 0.5 for ready aim time. Setup time nerf. Attach time 1.3 to zero. Retreat speed bonus. Okay. Fair enough. They were crazy powerful. That's what I meant by my crutch. So I'm a little bit peeved that they won't be as crazy powerful now. And also they've they've stopped it so it doesn't death loop. But to be fair, I haven't had a death loop to 50 cal for ages. So I just have to keep this in mind. 50 cals are no longer your crutch. Just build one, no longer two. Right, M20 is having its build time reduced so it can arrive soon onto the battlefield. Furthermore, it's armored skirts. Yeah, 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 I've seen this. This is good. 
Uh, they were never used, really, so fair enough. Um, blank angel. I, I always wanted to actually use this. I could never. I always just use turret jam, to be honest. Engine shot range from five to fifteen. Engine shot cost from. Yeah, I never used it. That's what I'm saying. So it's getting buffed. Um, now slows vehicle speed by fifty percent and rotation by twenty five for eight seconds, rather than causing engine damage. Okay. Engine shot can now be used on the move. Engine shot. Okay, fair enough. They're making it usable. So I'll now start using engine shot. <laughs> Pack out it's another crutch of mine as it's USF. Let's have a look. AOE distance of his HE rounds reduced. Okay, so that's a nerf, meaning the damage drop off shells. The unit previously did too much damage to infantry. Yes, it did, I suppose. Um, but the crew, so it's a little bit more survivable now. So it can't be stolen as easily, um, but it does slightly less damage overall because it won't be killing people on the edge of its uh, AoE. Well, the distance is lower, isn't it? So it can't, it'll be killing less people, basically. A half-track changes. Um, to give the captain some anti-sniper tower, the machine guns are getting a bonus against snipers. Ooh, interesting. A mode for the M15 is being toned as the M15 and multiple guns dedicated to... Yep, yep, yep. 50, yep, nice. Okay. Um, fair enough. The biggest thing there is it's now a sniper killer. The following change was done to match other aerial recon abilities. The Major is no longer locked in place. Cool. Can now direct the angle. Oh, I like it. Adding a little bit more skill into the game. That's what we like to see. I don't like one clicks, I like two clicks. Drag, click. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, 75 mil Sherman was experience requirements have been reduced previously. The value, if you say so. I don't really have an opinion on that, to be honest. That's is that that's not the really good Sherman, is it? That's just the one that nobody built. Which one's the one that nobody ever built? I thought the 76 was the good one. Hmm. Okay, seems like a buff to the slightly less popular Sherman. Um, auto fire range reduced. Okay, so you have to push it in a little bit more. Um, range lower. Scatter max slow. It's more accurate at least. Um, damage from 100. Less killy though. Um, that's a raft of changes. Can't crush people either, apparently. Um, that is a raft of changes, isn't it? That's going to work a lot more differently. Angle of scatter from 7 to 6. Shell count from 4 to 5. That's the barrage, though. That's the, all to do with the barrage ability, isn't it? Interesting. I have to try that out, to be honest. I haven't really used Scots in the balance mod. That's why I was stumbling for an opinion. Uh, penetration from 30 to 20. Vet 3 it was, quite frankly, utterly ridiculous. So, if you say so. You've still got HVAP as well. So, yeah, that makes sense. Now, WC51 needs big adjustments. Step on it. 15 munitions. That's already a good change. MG range down. Perfect. Because the WC51 could just snipe units from afar. It was really pissing people off. Uh, could no longer decrew. Change to rifle mods to represent the change. Okay. Okay, I like it. Now gains shared experience. Interesting. But ah, so you have to you can't just use it going around the map on its own. It has to be a combined arms unit. Really cool changes they are. That's clever. They're not trying to remove it from the game. They're, well, they're not trying to do that with any nerf, but sometimes they actually accidentally do that. They but they're making some clever little things and rear echelons have to be together with it. Might be a little bit too much one to um at least they've got that increase of range there, giving it back, but never fully back to what it was. Interesting. That's really interesting. I think that should make it so it's still used now and again, but it won't be the... the you know, we all saw World Championships 2020. Um, yeah, 10 seconds. Okay, this is a slight nerf to Calliope's there. British headquarters structures infantry now rally towards hq truck yep that kind of makes sense a bit more central of the base ac and both as tech no longer mutually exclusive what yeah they were expensive but i thought that was the whole idea of hammer and anvil the mutual exclusivity forward assembly build time is down Yep, I never really saw it, to be fair. Accuracy from, unless it was some cancerous um, SimCity Brits, ca accuracy for the Piat um, higher, and the munitions cost is lower. So it's a slight buff to Piat. So that could actually help Brits quite a lot, especially for um, team games with Sapper Blobs, etc. The Mill Bomb is having its fuse time increased. 
yeah, to be fair, it was uh, pretty horrendous to dodge. Uh, Royal Engineers moved the headquarters. Oh. What builds from Platoon Command Post, though? Um, a number of their abilities and construction options have been pushed back to help avoid a significant impact in the early game. Oh. Ah, so you get upgraded sappers with a platoon command post and they can cat faster. That's cool. I like it. So the whole it's a little bit convoluted, but what isn't from the when the balance team have a tricky problem to solve. They always find different you know, complicated um, solutions for complicated problems, I suppose. And um, yeah, I really like that. Infantry section um can't cap as fast though. The medical kit costs more. And the upgrade time is more. Okay, so that'll complement the Royal Engineer change, I suppose. Interesting. Vickers. Garrison bonus is now replaced with take aim. Uh, take aim. Okay, well, I'm not too aware of how that works, to be fair. I won't comment on something I don't understand. Um, automatic healing removed. Move to platoon command post. Medics are. Okay. So it's giving something to platoon command post, I suppose. Population from three to two. Okay, if you say so. Can no longer recruit team weapons. Interesting. I've not seen that before. That's funny. Healing abilities replaced with ambulance like AoE healing. That lock squads into place and slowly heals in proximity. That's better. I tried using them before and they were fiddly. So that's better. I like it. They were fiddly before that. Fair enough. The Universal Carrier. Um, fuel cost to five, yes please, I'm liking it. Vickers case suppressive fire, abilities munition cost from 10 to 20. Yeah, they did need a nerf, so that helps, um, certainly. Didn't want them being the be-all and end-all of every brick game. Um, just Same with the WC-51, I do think light vehicles and company heroes have been poorly implemented. Um, we all pine for jeeps and bikes from Co. 1 basically, and the Universal Carrier and the WC-51 certainly weren't what we wanted to see from light vehicles, a little bit overbearing. Um, the British assault officer having his capture rate increased to compensate for nerfed effect sections. I like it. So we're actually going to see more combined arms from Brits, basically. Um, hopefully, that's the idea, at least. And experience, I don't know much about the assault officers, let's be honest. Build time to 60 seconds. Okay, so you just can't see a Luke's and bash it out immediately. Slide from 50 to 42. So again, trying to encourage combined arms there. Veteran C2 returns site to 50. Okay. Okay, Cromwell have had so many changes over the years, and if they're saying they're giving more ability to the early on for a slight reduction in offensive power, that might be a good idea. They were one of the most um, high top speed and you know reliable tanks of the Second World War. So if it's got the hunt ability, uh, penetration, moving accuracy of twenty, detects sixty, fog of war for twenty seconds, available at veteran C one. That's cool as fuck. I love that one abilities as I've already mentioned. Um, I like I like this change. I really like it. I just think Cromwell's, yeah, that gives them more character. That is an excellent, excellent change to Cromwell's. That's what we want to see. Creativeness, a little bit of uh, interest and intrigue. Good work on that unit. Centaur seen its increases in its mobility and speed. Previously, units' poor movement stats made it difficult to use the average survivability. I could agree with that. It did get nerfed too much. So it's acceleration and speed's better. Okay, and the lowering the XP requirements. Fair enough. This used to be obviously the most powerful unit in the game at one point in time, back in 2015. So the fact they've had to do that doesn't surprise me. Uh, it did get so many nerfs over the years. So fair enough. Let's bring it back into use a little bit more. Um, Firefly was having a turret. Tur yeah, it did rotate quite slowly. But you just basically keep your Firefly still when you're getting flanked a little bit more now. Just get those shots away. Turret. Horizontal and vertical traverse speed for me. Yep, yep, that sounds good to me. Whew, there's a hell of a lot of changes. It's a massive patch. The Churchill is seeing improvements to its main gun, which now always uses shortest reload value. Okay, if you say so. Um, rear armor's down to make it more flankable. Tank commander upgrades added. Version C1 grants a Vickers Pintle mount. Juicy. And it's got the consistency on the reload now. It's just been made 6.125 consistently. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. Let's go to Comet. 
has received slight nurse to its scatter to make the units less potent against infantry. Hmm. The turret traverse has always been or also been reduced, which was too high compared to most other vehicles, which included the M4. So the scatter is increased. Traverse is down. There's a rare thing that they'd make something less consistent but with the comet i can fully understand it's one of the powerful tanks in the game and to be honest it was the brick crutch um so yeah interesting interesting mortar emplacement has received a number of changes to make it more usable by being cheaper to initially put down oh mortars i fucking hate them mortar two now starts with only one mortar active activated by upgrading the emplacement for 100 manpower 20 seconds research. Uh, I just hate Brit mortars, man. Heavy mortar barrage. Hammer or anvil. They're losing the design of the game a little bit. I always thought they might go this way with Brits. Take away that uniqueness of the, um, the, the, the kind of independent teching. But fair enough. Population of the both has been reduced to match its effectiveness. <sighs> Really? <laughs> I hate both of so much. I don't want to look at any of these changes. <laughs> they make me cry. Piercing around... Si I never saw that use, so fair enough. 60 munitions sounds good to me. Valentine. Now needs to be built from the HQ after being unlocked at 5 CPs. 50 second build time. Yes, please. They were... Uh, they're delaying it, basically. Awful calling unit, so thank God for that. Ostia changes. Let's go. How long have I been recording for? 31 minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Medical kits are receiving a long, lower cost to incentivize their use. Fair enough. If you say so, that might help. Pioneer changes. Veterans requirements adjusted to make the mediocre make up for their mediocre combat potential. 15% accuracy. Place of minus 23% accuracy. Okay, that makes them more survivable in the late game and makes that veteran seat easier to attain really big change for that is to be honest easier to attain veterancy for pioneers of Wehrmacht is such a buff because of their they just need to be repairing those panzers in the late game which gives you more panzers more of the time so yeah it's a, it's a buff that great formation changed as we've already mentioned veteran squad leader um rather than a straight improvement over the lmg 42 yep it gets the stgs i've played, seen that used it works um Accuracy bonus of veteran squad elite, if you say so. Ah, oh, sniper. I really miss this. No longer fire faster close to hostile units. The sniper no longer allow the sniper to snap off another shot immediately after firing the incendiary round. In exchange, the stun should now always go off on targets reliably, and its price has been reduced. So you won't get the double taps anymore. Um, and I did kind of like the double taps. It made up for the Wehrmacht short, small squad sizes versus the big opponent's squad sizes. And the fact that they can't do that now, hmm, not sure what I think. I mean, it'll still um, kill on retreat 100% of the time, which would be quite nice. But, uh, yeah, they won't get double taps off. Mm, yeah, fair enough. Okay, if you say so. I mean, Brits, this is a buff to Brits, basically, because the Wehrmacht sniper was the anti-Brit counter. Um, what was the Brit counter? Or the anti-Brit mechanism. Panzer Grenadiers are having their grenade range exchange for a recharge bonus. Yes. Yes, it was. It, you could throw it too far. Um, yeah, I like it. And I like the dependability of how far you can throw it being kept the same. Osfind um, is having its experience requirement lower due to its role as an anti-infantry. Tank AA tank. Yeah, Vet 3 Osfinds though, that's hype. They're really good. Um, most, must, given the Stug, must cycle a reload before it can fire. A target weak point for a fairly weak blind. We're increasing the ability's damage. Cool. Do it. Brumbear is having its veterans 2 armor bonus slightly reduced and the bunker busting barrage received a munitions cost to better reflect its power. Yeah, it needs a cost, fair enough. Um, slightly making the vet 2 armor bonus less mega potent. And the recharge on the bunker busting barrage is down, okay. 
Due to the nature of these upgrades, uh, the exclusivity is reduced. Medic and Command Bunker upgrades are no longer mutually exclusive. Oh, yes! How has it taken that long to make that change? Finally! That is so cool! Finally! You'll be able to put a bunker behind, like, a house and, like, make it into a forward headquarters. That is cool. I cannot overstate how cool that changes. That is awesome. Right. Panzerwerfers. Counter barrage removed. Um, recharge bonus from 40 to 20. Low angle rocket barrage added at veteran C1. Mm. Cool. Okay. I'll have to see how that works. Nice. Um, suppression. Now receiving suppression to lessen their ability to wipe squads. Basically, what, yeah, so your squad will walk onto them. This is for newbie players. You walk onto them. They won't keep walking and eventually die. They'll get suppressed first. Um, ah, but they'll have just two to three mine patches to be suppressed. This is clever stuff. Balance team got big brains. Ostrupen. They've been removed to the infantry company. Good. So they're not called in now. However, they still cost 200 manpower. And they, you have to speak ten, take 21 seconds to build them. Panzerfaust range is down. And... Uh, Okay, and they've got a little bit better accuracy for slot item base weaponry. Hmm. Okay, I think that matches the core idea, maybe. The fact that they get a bonus on that. Yeah, uh, we. I know it's gonna help. I, I do think our troopers are still gonna be used though, so they're still gonna be used, but they're not gonna be used every single game. So it's a good change. Let's face it. It's it. They'll be used rarely, and the players that use them will be using them because they want to go support weapon based strategy most likely. Which is exactly how Ostrupen should work. Assault Grenadier. Sprint lock. Bef oh god, what a terrible change. It makes no sense. Does it? Does it make no sense? I just don't like the fact that they can't sprint till it hit battle phase one. So now, not only is the idea of infantry running a ability, it's now an ability that you need to tech for. I know I had three uses of inverted air commas um but that's just silly <laughs> it's just convoluted sometimes the balance team lose track of good design and what looks and feels good and and that's an example of that right there jaeger armor commander being able to both spot and hard counter artillery units which would be able to pressure the elephant stuka dive bombs replaced with ju87 anti-tank strafe Okay, from the close air support. Interesting. Yeah, I I understand that change. The the basically the uh, you could counter the thing that counters you. You got AT guns going up at you. Click dead. Okay, W time. Right. All heavy tanks share a cooldown. That's a nerf. Interesting. So you can't lose your um. What one of your heavy tanks and just push out another immediately. Makes sense. It makes sense. It's a good for team games that change. Um, battle group has been split into two parts. <laughs> they love doing this shit. They've done it for lots of the uh, buildings now. To be fair, right? Battle group headquarters. One hundred and fifty manpower or ten fuel offers Ali IG upon completion. Medic upgrade. Fifty manpower. Ten fuel. Battle group upgrade. <laughs> Battle group upgrade. 100 manpower, 20 fuel. Oh my god, we need the spreadsheets, guys. Oh my god. Forward retreats lowered, but in cost. <sighs> you need to upgrade it to get... Separate upgrades. Oh man, it's just cringe. What is this rubbish? Who's quality checking the design approach? The ease of life for people that have to learn this shit. Okay, the players, the watchers, the casters, the... Um, like, man. That is just... Like... I don't think Relic read this far, surely. No offence to the wonderful men and no women in the balance team. No offense, they could be they they not that they could, yeah whatever you get it it's just a joke, um but seriously, 
Man, that's just convoluted. It's just silly. The medic upgrade is different to the battle group upgrade of the battle group headquarters. Battle group headquarters, medic upgrade, battle group upgrade. What a load of trouble. Shall we add some more in for comedic um comedic let's add another one in. Um uh, see if we can. Yeah, I think we can. Here we go. Uber battle group headquarters upgrade can repack and move 100 fuel 200 oh, 300 manpower there we go uber battle group headquarters there we go that's that's better that's what we want we don't just want this and now due to that joke i lost my place i deserve everything that's happened to me um we're almost back to where we were i think that we were here there we go schwer panzer fuel cost from 60 to 90 Panzer Ulf Rosen 6030. They're just reverting some of the, the treatment that they gave the Schwer earlier on. Yeah, okay. Uh, I did see that Obers were coming out a little bit too soon. So if you want to do that, maybe do that. That's cool. Focus grenades, flame grenades, been altered to make it easier to set sandbag buildings alight. I just wanted to see sandbags burn the sandbags. <laughs> flame grenades will now take four to five grenades to ignite a structure. Nobody's ever going to do that. Um, Kubel moving burst duration from 0.1 to 0.75. Cool, Kubel moving cooldown from 0.1 to 0.8. We're kind of with the following changes. I, I don't know what to say about Kubel's there. Uh, okay, We're kind of making all of the light vehicles slightly less potent, aren't they? It would seem. Um, target size from 10 to 20. Will now attempt to reverse positions at least 60 meters away. You can now reverse Raketenwerfers. That is interesting. Hey, Lady Lou. Good girl. Attach time from 0 0.7 to 0. Just recording a video about the balance changes. Uh, 70 to 60, population from 8 to 7, concussion grenade, cost reduced to 20, vet 4. Um, I like the fact that Panzer Shrek and Minesweepers are no longer mutually exclusive. And yeah, that, that, that does help. Didn't see enough. Well, you did actually start seeing a little bit more of them before the balance patch, to be fair. Um, and I'm very, I'm liking the fact that stun grenades are cost. Do I like that? Mm, I don't know. I like this. That's pretty cool. And the population. But I was already starting to see Stern Pioneers more utilized. Two of them. Two of them more utilized in, in games. So this this change is coming at a time when they were seeing more use anyway. Two, two, two squads per, per OKW army. But that, that will have, have help the OKW issues, of course, of the army size in the late game be too penalizing. Flak off track build time to 45 seconds. Okay, that just may, yeah, that just compensates for those befuddle changes from earlier on. Ali IG can you smoke more easily? Cool. Um, vertical weapon speed, fire and smoke. Yep, making it it's more of a smoke cannon than an artillery piece. Joking. I half track passive camouflage detection from ten to twenty five. Mate, I have no idea what what if anybody uses them. Ah, they they've got a recon plane now as well for fifty munitions. That's actually pretty cool. I was about to move on from that. And then I saw the uh, the recon plane ability. That's cool. Anyway, let's go down to Luke's. Okay. It's more of a suppression platform at Vet Five. Vet Five Luke's was always cool, but um, that that's even cooler. Coaxial burst increased. Yep, that helps that thing I just spoke about. Now it's detected by enemy units at fifteen minutes when it's in cautious smoke. Okay, you can actually detect. Oh no, it's it's it makes your cautious movement more more viable by a whopping uh, twenty thirty three percent detection range from five to twenty five, reduced to fifteen when cloaked. Okay, so it's a bit more blind. Uh, damage penalty against heavy cover and garrison from zero point five to. Okay, so it can actually do better damage to people behind heavy cover. More of a nerve to cover. Good. 
Puma is just trying to make it again with that change from the uh, the target weak point thing from earlier. Um, it's from 50 to 42 side now. So it's all about more combined arms. The balance team have been doing this for years. Just about trying to make the game more about using more units together than lone wolves. Ah, Stuka changes. Good. Um, hit penetration. Actually penetrate stuff. That's cool. AoE penetration is down, however. Um, it can't do as much versus emplacements anymore. I don't know why they would want to do it. It does have that fl uh, crazy flame ability, doesn't it? Napalm, suppression, rocket scatter from 16 to 12. So they want you to use the napalm rockets more and the rocket, the vanilla rocket ability less. That's where they're going with that. Kind of makes sense. It's it's a cool change, and uh, yeah, interesting. So it's it's going to be more consistent against armored vehicles, they say. Yeah, that's the penetration, and then napalm. So they're just making this thing have more utility and making you think about what you're doing with it more. That's cool. Um, MG34 and SDG are no longer require hands of authorization. Ah, that how that makes sense. So the episode lot and do come a little bit later, but when they come, they can just get the MG34s. Okay, I like it. Combat Blitz, Veteran C5. Never really saw King Tigers to be honest. They're always a meme, weren't they? Unless it was a team game. Veteran C5 reload bonus move to Veteran C3, and this is this reflects that. Um, trying to make them actually get more onto the field. No longer requires Panzer authorization. Okay, that's hype for uh, a lot of people. Um, I imagine you know the Austrian was in a tricky spot. It used to be rushed in in one v one games, but with the cost back in the Schwer, uh, it's barely a buff now, isn't it? With the earlier timing of the head, so the target size of the unit has been increased until Veterancy one. To make the units easy to ward off the team team weapons. Yeah, it was a bit too nimble and small, wasn't it? But it doesn't require Panzer authorization either. Bigger to hit. Um okay, okay. Panzer Alf G. Deacceleration bonus. From, yeah, it was a bit too nippy, wasn't it? Standardized. More standardization for the Panthers, it seems. And nearly onto the last faction. Veteran C5, 20% reduced received accuracy modifier removed, if you say so. Special Rifle Command. You can build it faster. Cool. Like it. Tankovi Battalion is now 8. It's down to 75 fuel, 200 map power. That's good because that reflects the T-70 change that I'm, we're about to talk about. And they're making this cost less fuel as well. So they're just trying to encourage more people to go both Tankovi. And, well, you have to go mechanized if you've gone Tankovi. But I don't it's a buff to Soviets, isn't it? But they do have a nerf to the T-70. That's a really cool buff as well. So many buffs to Soviets in this patch. The This is just a godsend to go both 18-8 and Molotovs. Um, it's really cool. You're going to love it. Um, if you're a Soviet player, not so much if you're a Wehrmacht player. Mobilized reserves, global upgrade. Um, now reduces penals, but from reinforced by two. Cool. Okay, that's another buff. <laughs> Finally, a slight nerf. Jesus Christ, they've only gone from ten to fifteen. Tripwire flares, OP man. <laughs> no, that's that, that that's that's slizable. To be fair, it is fifteen munitions for one element. So thirty Wehrmacht manpower of a grenadier, isn't it? Soviet mortar and ZIS um, crews experience value from thirty to forty. If you say so. Combat Engineers is um, received accuracy, replacing the weapon accuracy bonus of 3. More survivable. Cool. I always thought they had that bonus anyway, but apparently they now generally do have it. Okay, fair enough. Alright, the um, they get better increased build speed with Veteran C1. And Veteran C3, 10% accuracy bonus removed. Yeah, they were getting a bit ridiculous, to be fair, in the late game. So, fair enough. Not, I don't like anything that means more sandbags on the field, but the Soviet sandbags are largely too big anyway. It kind of benefits everybody. You just get maps full of huge pieces of green cover that everybody can use now. 
Uh, penal battalions have more changes. Do you remember the penal battalion change in 2017? Never forget. The cheaper you can reinforce them more quickly, you get less accuracy at VET 3. The weapon, the veteran C2 received accuracy is up, so they're more survivable at VET 2. PTRS upgrade now grants an additional PTRS. Yep. This, people are saying that this might make them really powerful, by the way. Um, 60 to 70. That's what it costs now. It's a little bit more costly, however, to account for the fact there's more of them. Um, PTRS accuracy is up as well. Yep, it is. It's up across the board. Uh, drop rate is down. PTRS penals are in. 2021 PTRS penal land. Let's go. Right. M3 scout health is up. Armor is down. It now gets shared veterancy and also heals. M3s are going to have such a lovely time. They can capture the territory veterancy too. Uh, this is going to be a unit that actually sees use more than just trying to get rid of a one folks grenade squad in the early game and then get killed. You might want to keep it alive for longer than just that now. Uh, attach time. That's cool. So it just means that the cycle animations is, is quicker, basically. Suppressing fire ability is now available without veterancy. Uh, okay. Nobody ever really used it, so maybe somebody will now want to use it one day. The HE barrage is having its reload time increased to give team weapons more time to react when being barraged from 2 to 3. This is a monstrous patch. From 2 to 3. Yep, we want that because the field gun is just annoying. Um... And if the barrage is going to take 50% more time, that's good. M5 half track, AA change, chance reduced. It would destroy everything, to be fair. I used that in cheat mod when I wanted to show tr plane crashes and videos I was making. But yeah, fair enough. Um, force reload, good, good, good. Gains when upgraded with the M5 squad. Of course it does. Big changes. The reload is now up. Uh, and the AOE can now only hit three models per squad. Um... Yeah, it, it's, it's an important change. I do think the T-70s needed toning down, and I think that does it. Um, yeah, it, it's a good change. They were just previously like machine gun terminators, weren't they? So fair enough. And, and they were the crutch of the Soviet army. I'd much rather them not be. SU-76 receives a large number of changes to improve its performance. Cool. The cone from 2 to 5. Wow. <laughs> That's a big change, isn't it? That's good. Much bigger cone. Much more easy to shoot something now. Uh, coming at you from the sides. Camouflage delay from 5 to 2. Camouflage rotation penalty from 75 to 50. Uh, no, about the camouflage utility of them. I wasn't really using it. You say so. Rotation rate from 32 to 34. Okay, that's a little tweak, isn't it? Make it turn faster. I actually want tracking replaces. Tank hunter cap. Oh, this is the camouflage they run about. Right, okay. First shot from the camouflage is 20% penetration. And then this must be from a commander that I never used. Veterans requirements are up. Because it's going to be OP as anything. 20% increased acceleration to deceleration of VET 2. VET 3 rotation bar uh, is down to compensate with the fact they've already given it loads of it. Can no longer crush infantry. It's pretty important. And somebody is going to get caught off by that. T-34 RAM abilities... Uh, the, it no longer does them these mental criticals. It no longer deals its complete stun on penetration and deflection. Instead, it will now slow target at seventy five percent for five seconds and disables weapons. Okay, so it's like a stun ability now. Cool, I like it. That's a much better change than they were considering with the health and stuff. Su eighty five with the reduction of armor on certain Axis tanks, along with the Su eighty five receiving important blah blah blah. Um, Veteran C three penetration from thirty to twenty. Focus sight radius from seventy five to sixty five. Oh, so the triangle's getting smaller. Su eighty five is no longer the complete um, crutch of the Soviet army. Katusha creeping barrage is down. Never, never saw anybody use it. So you want to make it better? That's good news, I suppose. Um, following changes are in line with the other HMGs. Cool. ISG-152, the big unit of team games. I'm sure that they're going to nerf it. Yes. 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 It's such nerfs to ISU. And I don't really have much of a, a, a you know, a dog in that fight because I never really see it in the cast I do. So, yeah. L2 
Bombing runs exchange royalty. Sturm attack trace for the advanced warfare. Okay, exchanged. Oh. Yes, that makes perfect sense. The exact same thing that was countering the elephant, they've stopped it countering the ISU. So they're swapping it for the uh, this, the anti this, the attack strafe. It's a really cool idea. I like it. Right, critical damage icon snare. This is all really nice UI adjustments. And they're just making stuff better. It's going to be sexier. A lot of good bug changes and hotkey changes to watch out for. Fixing issues, lots of issues, lots and lots of issues. <laughs> oh my god, we'll be here for a long time with all the issues they're fixing. Holy shit. And some bulletin fixes. Long. But that is impressive. I have not got time. To, we'd have to have a second video, which would be a lot less more dry. It's already been much longer than I anticipated doing. 55 minutes of stuff that nobody will ever watch. Give me a shout out if you reached this far. I'm sure you didn't. Uh, if you did, you're a madman and a masochist. Uh, but thank you and hope you have a lovely weekend. Cheers.